creating an inline WAN emulator. So guys, I had this old PC laying around and I needed to test two video endpoints and I needed to simulate some sort of WAN between these two endpoints so I can take a look at how things affect them in terms of packet loss and latency and everything. So I've had this thing in my basement for a long time. I figured it'd be a great box to make into a WAN emulator. And I wanted to do it in line so I could just hook in the two video endpoints side by side and I didn't really have to deal with a whole network or VMware or anything else. So I'm going to show you guys today real quick and easy how to accomplish it. And first I'll show you the hardware. So got this really old Acer laptop that I've had for almost 10 years now. It's really old and ancient, um, but it works great for what I need it for. And what I'm going to do is I have the one... Land on motherboard if you guys could see that over here and I needed a second one because obviously I needed to put this in line between the two endpoints so I went over to Amazon and I bought this little USB dongle here um, I'll put the description or I'll put the link for this in the description if you guys want to purchase this exact one because I know the drivers work for it so um, you know instead of messing around with trying to find one that works I know this one does so this is going to go into one of the USB ports over here and then we're going to put some software. I've got a USB key right here. We're going to put some software on this, and we're actually going to boot off of this onto the laptop. So at the end of the day, it's going to kind of look like this. You're going to have your one PC or your network plugged into here, and then your other uh, device, whatever it is, plugged into here. And then this thing's going to emulate the WAN in the middle going through everything. So that's the hardware, and next we'll go to the software and how to configure this stuff. All right, so after you get your hardware out of your basement and everything, now I'm going to show you guys where to get the software and what to do with the software. So first thing we need to do is we need to get the WAN emulation software that we're going to put on our USB stick. I mean, I guess you could put this on a CD. I don't have any burnable CDs laying around anymore, so the, the USB stick works really good for me. So you're going to go to the WANM web page right here. I've got it right here at the top. You can also just search Google or Yahoo or whatever for uh, WANM, and it's usually the first link that pops up. When you get here, you're going to go over to the left side here, and where it says Downloads. And then what I've been using is the latest uh, version. So I've actually, I don't know why this one's clicked, but I've been using the Beta 2 here. So when you go there... Uh, it'll download, you'll get to the download page, and the one we're looking for right here, WANM 3.0 beta 2.tar.bz.2. So go ahead, download that. And then in order to burn this, we are going to need another program to, in order to do that. And the one that I've been using, and I tried a couple of these, this is the only one that I actually got to work and burn it properly to make it bootable. Um, Rufus, I guess it's called. So this tiny little program, don't need to install it, don't need to really do anything. Again, web address is up here. Uh, if you just type in like Rufus USB burner, I think that that pops up pretty easily on Google as well. So get those two applications downloaded. And I'm going to show you guys, I have them right here on my desktop. And insert your USB stick into your laptop. And you'll see it pop up. And hopefully it's blank. If it's not blank, it's going to get written over because that's what happens with this. Um, but when you get the WANM software, you're going to see here that it's compressed. So we need to uncompress it. I use a tool called WinRAR. I've been using this tool for a long, long time. Um, right click on it, extract files, you know, whatever, and put it, put it somewhere. Once you're done extracting it, you're going to end up with this ISO file here. WANM 3.0 beta 2.iso. Then we're going to open up Rufus, Rufus, and it's going to ask us, okay, yes. <clears throat> and there's my thumb drive that I just popped in there. Now, I've already burned this once, so that's why it's labeled WANM. I'm not going to burn it again. I'll just show you guys how to do it. Leave everything the same here, file system FAT32. Make sure that uh, create boot disk image is checked there. And then we're going to load our ISO by clicking on this little disk image. And we'll go to our desktop. And there's the beta file, the ISO. Click open. And then when you guys are ready to start, click start. And that's going to burn the ISO to that USB stick and make it bootable.
So go ahead and do that, and then we're going to go over to the PC. We're going to plug it in, and I'll show you guys how to get WinM set up and working for you. All right, so you should have your burned USB drive right here, and what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into our old laptop here. And one thing I did notice um, when booting, I don't know if it sometimes got confused because I had the USB dongle in here for the, uh, the other Ethernet, but I've been leaving this out when I boot it. Um, I did have to go in and change the BIOS settings to make sure that the first boot device was from USB and not the hard drive. Uh, so just do that. Mine was F2. Go in, change the boot device. Real easy. I think another way of doing it is just letting the computer boot pressing F10 or F12, and then selecting the boot device. Um, but for me, I already set it in the BIOS, so I'm going to go ahead and just turn this laptop on. And, you know, the old laptop sometimes takes a, uh, a minute or so, but should boot directly off of my USB thing right here. And now you can see that it's coming up, and I'm going to go ahead and plug this other USB Ethernet dongle back in. And we sit here and wait. And eventually we'll get to the WAN-M um, screen coming up here in a second. And I guess you can create a save file if you want. I usually just run this thing kind of once and, and set it up every single time since it's so easy. But I guess you can put a save file in there too if you wanted to. And it continues to boot. All right, and then it's actually coming up here. And now you can see here I've got the two Ethernet interfaces right there, ETH0, which is the one that's native to the laptop, and then ETH1, that is the USB dongle that uh, that I added. I bought off of Amazon and, and popped in here. So you could use this as is, but I want to use this inline, so I want to actually bridge these interfaces together. So that way I just have the green wire over here going into my network, and then the USB dongle over here is going to go into the device that I want to simulate the WAN connection between. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over here. I found some really good instructions out on out on the web here. So in order to use them, we're going to go into the console here, pop that up, and then we're going to follow these instructions that I got. And I'll post these, and maybe I'll post this link too in the description so you can follow along, and copy and paste, or do whatever you want to do with, with these things here. Um, you don't have to type in every single one of these commands. I'm only using ETH0, ETH1. I don't need 2, 3, or 4. And so you know, we'll follow that all the way through. So basically, we start typing this stuff in here. So first thing we need to do is exit to shell. Okay, and then we need to configure ETH0 for IP address 000. And same thing for ETH1 here. Okay, then I need to create the bridge after this. We are TTL zero. Okay. And then add the interfaces to the bridge. So we are CTL. And do the same thing for one. Now this is this part's really cool and kind of optional too. If you're gonna manage everything from this laptop here, you can probably just stop here and do everything. But if you want a way to remote manage it from another PC, we can add an IP address onto this bridge and we can get to it remotely. 
I'll do that just to show you guys because sometimes it is a little bit easier, especially if this is going to be tucked away in a back closet somewhere. Um, just another couple commands to do to get that to work. I F C. And then pick an IP address here. And then your subnet mask. Okay. And then your default gateway. And mean you know, your default gateway, obviously. And then you should be good. And the cool part is this thing actually also passes DHCP. So for your laptop or whatever device you're plugging in to your mm. USB dongle here, you don't have to do anything. You just plug it in. It pulls DHCP normally on the network. And then you simulate what you want between that device and through the rest of the network here. So you're done. You're up and running. Um, and I can show you. We can go around and mess with things on here or... I can open it up in the browser here too. Sixty nine should be able to get to it. Okay, so you just go to the IP address forward slash WAN EM, and then you get to it here. Now there's two modes. If you're just trying to do something real basic here, you can do um, Ethernet one, and you set your your speed here. So if you're just trying to do like, oh, I just want to simulate a T1 type of connection, you know, you would do that right there. Uh, the way that this works, so with mine, Ethernet 1 is, I believe, the upload and Ethernet 0 is the download. I guess it depends on the way that it detects the cards and everything. So I might have to play around a little bit with that to figure out what's what. But for mine, Ethernet 1 is, um, you know, the upload or the download and then Ethernet 0 is the, is the upload. So if you're trying to do something simple, go in and just add it. Say, hey, I have a T1 interface. What I was doing was going in over to advanced mode before. And again, you have to go back and forth and do ETH1 and ETH0 separately for upload and download. And I was playing with loss. So I was working on a, a video endpoint and I was trying to simulate 15% packet loss across a WAN, so I was putting that in here, and you can even put in other parameters too. Maybe I've got a link with 40 milliseconds of delay. I can put the bandwidth in here as well and say, hey, we've only got a one meg connection across this WAN link. Apply settings, and then it will automatically start too. So, but just make sure that you know you only you set one way. If you're trying to set both ways, make sure you go back, select your Ethernet zero and do the same thing over here. Or you might only want one way. You, maybe you only want to simulate um, download and not upload. Maybe you don't care about upload. So, you know, you can do that either way there. And that's pretty much it. It took me a couple hours to figure this out. Hopefully it'll take you guys even less time since I'm, I showed you how to do it. And if you like the video, please like it and please subscribe to my channel. Thanks.